Jam Master J. The stuff of nightmares. What's going on, man? Oh, Jimmy, what it do, Bay B. He said the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> Good weekend. I saw uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Did Same. That interest you? you saw it? I did. What'd I watched it here on the couch. Yeah. It was. Uh, <laughs> I was glad I watched it here on the couch. Yeah. I'm not gonna say it was bad. No. I'm gonna say that I was glad I watched it on the couch. Mm-hmm. It was everything I expected to be. <laughs> it was. Uh, you know, I had some problems with some plot issues. I mean, but did you expect it to. But not I was have- hoping after Godzilla King of the Monsters that they would have corrected some of that. They did a little bit, but not a lot. So there were there were some problems with that. However. Anytime the two main characters were on screen with each other, I mean, it was it was exactly what I needed it to be. So they got that part right, but there are some other issues with the film. We'll talk about some other time. You saw Kong Skull Island, right? I did. I liked. It. I thought that was solid. I thought that was solid. Okay. Because it's such a self-contained movie, there are a lot of plot problems that aren't in that movie that are in the second Godzilla and in this movie. I can see now that. the first Godzilla. You know, it, it, it's probably the best of the the trilogy as far as plot goes. But you know, it was good. It was good. Did a good job of leading up to each other, though. Let's think about it. Did a good job on both ends with their movies leading right into this battle in the middle that had absolutely no plot, and it was just a beautiful slugfest that you <laughs> you want to have. Right, right, right. I think it's funny. There was a headline talking about this before I go too far off the rails that said if you're expecting intelligence you don't want to watch this movie and it's like you expected intelligence but why does it have this... to be that way like the the problems with the film they could easily have been corrected there, why does it have to be that way there's no correcting so those. In, in a universe where two monsters like this exist and they fight each other the only way for it to truly work is for things to not make any sense as to how we get there exactly they just need to start fighting we just waiting for them to pummel each other anyway that's all you cared about you're there for the pummeling right. you're not there for because anything in the else. animal kingdom i mean there really is no backstory they just go out <laughs> it's great they see each other you're on my territory well there's your backstory you're on my territory you're on my territory <laughs> yeah bow, bow, so bow, bow, you go. yeah okay so with that let's start with this yeah <laughs> on the last show I opened up with my theory on quarterbacks being killed by teams. And I stand to that. As we had some breaking news coming into the show, this was not supposed to be A block, but it's definitely deserving to be our A block because it poses these questions again. Are organizations the cause of players and quarterbacks suffering? So, like, for example, the New York Jets have finally traded your boy... Um, Sam Darnold, he's been traded to the Carolina Panthers for a sixth rounder this year and in a second and fourth rounder in 2022. And it begs the question, did the Jets just give this man away? You would expect a quarterback who was drafted number two in the NFL draft to actually be traded for something of more quality. I'm sorry, he's third overall. For being third overall draft pick, you would expect him to get more probably like a second round pick and a third round pick Mm -hmm. instead of a 2-4 and a 6. He also was subjected to playing for the Jets, which the Jets have been a dumpster fire for how many years now? Since Joe Namath. There you go. (laughs) I mean, they had those two AFC championships. Hell yeah, with with the butt fumble. They weren't going to win, so those don't count. Butt fumble got them there. So, yeah, you're right. They weren't going to win, and we knew that they weren't. So, in theory, it was Joe Namath. So, it goes back to me asking the question is, do organizations destroy quarterbacks? I... I was not high on Sam Darnold coming into the draft when he did back in 2018. I felt like he was overhyped. I felt like everyone just loved him because he was a dude from USC with a big arm, but had turnover issues in college, which we saw manifest here in the NFL. So now that he has been moved from the Jets, this tells us that they're definitely drafting a quarterback with, what's that, the number two pick Mm -hmm. in the draft? So that's a guarantee. Now we have to ask this question. What exactly is Carolina doing with Sam Darnold as well as who are the Jets going to draft? So I'm going to pose you the first question, Jimmy. What is Carolina thinking with this acquisition? Well, Carolina's thinking that they're ready to move off of Teddy Bridgewater. And by bringing in Sam Darnold, a starter in the league, you know, number three pick, and you're Teddy Bridgewater, you already know exactly what that means. They're not bringing him in having traded draft capital, not the draft capital they probably could have gotten from other teams who were more desperate, like mm-hmm. the Bears and like the Washington football team. Mm-hmm. But he knows that they're bringing him in to start. So now it kind of 
you know, it makes me think of the question I had right when this happened, which is, is now Teddy Bridgewater going to demand a trade if they aren't already planning to trade him anyway? Because there is no way that they're going to let him start with a full offseason ahead, um, ahead of Sam Darnold. So what this means for him is that it's time to find a new team and maybe one of those two teams that I just mentioned, even though the Bears have committed to Andy Dalton, in order to literally save their lives, they might move off of that before they're killed by their own fan base right. and look at Teddy Bridgewater or the Washington football team who is a quarterback and maybe one or two other pieces away from really competing in the playoffs. So maybe they take a look at him. So there are greener pastures out there, I think, for Teddy Bridgewater. So he could wake up. I guess this is why he was awake, I imagine. (laughs) So while awake, he can be upset about this, or he can look at this as maybe there is a better situation out there for me. I like what Washington has on offense and defense. Let me see if I can get myself there. So it depends on if Teddy Bridgewater is a glass half full, glass half empty type guy. I'm with you on that. And the trade made sense. So uh, Ian Rappaport with uh, mentioned this, and this is something that uh, I didn't realize. Okay. So Matt Rule, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, who took the job after coaching Baylor, mm-hmm. when he interviewed for the Jets a job, he did a virtual meeting with Sam Darnold. But the Jets, of course, if I believe they did not select him, um, Rule liked him. Mm-hmm. Matt also comes from the collegiate ranks, mm-hmm. and Sam Darnold is a closer proximity from that era of him being in college comparative to today. And since there was zero chance of them being able to trade from Deshaun Watson, and to be honest, nobody's going to trade for Deshaun Watson right now with everything no. going on. No. We have to wait until all that plays out. It makes sense for them to go for him instead of keeping Teddy Bridgewater, who has been in the league for a few years. He's a journeyman who came off that that. Dis, dis, scary knee injury that he dealt with Mm -hmm. it makes more sense to me that they would go after him at the same time i'm correct matt rule at one point was like the general manager or president of of football operations or something like that when he came in like he had that type of power but Mm -hmm. then they just recently brought in um the guy from uh who's a scott fritter fitter Mm -hmm. fitter -er. Mm -hmm. There's, from, there's fit, then there's fitterer. Yeah, he's fit. There's fit, there's fitter, right. and then there's fitterer. Fitter. There's a couple of E R E R S in there, which is fan, it. fascinating. It. He came. He was the Seahawks' former VP of uh, football operations, and now he's the general manager for the Panthers. But they just brought in in January, mm-hmm. so you can tell that they're now just going to completely throw everything out that I guess Matt Rule's trying to do. <laughs> when he <laughs> had the general manager position okay. and they're going to clean it up and see what they can do. I mean, the Teddy Bridgewater signing made sense because at the time they really didn't have any other options unless they wanted to draft a quarterback, which I think they did. And it just didn't work out mm-hmm. the way they wanted to. So I get them going for Sam Darnold. Now the question is, I think the, I don't think they're going to get rid of t- Bridgewater. I don't think Bridgewater is going to leave either. I think Bridgewater is going to start the season as starting quarterback. I think that at a certain point, though, because they exercised the fifth year on Sam Darnold's contract, Mm -hmm. that they're going to see what he looks like and transition him out, transition him in if they see that he will be worth it down the line. I mean, so do you think that that's the best move for Sam Darnold in the sense of giving him some time to be behind Teddy Bridgewater, not only to learn the offense, as people say, but to, I guess, scrub himself clean of the Adam Gase years in terms of what they did to his career. His psyche had him out there seeing ghosts. And that way, then bringing him in as opposed to bringing him in from the very beginning. Because what if he does come in and what if he sees sees Teddy out there? He's a starter. Let's say Teddy is good. Might he think that I won't get the chance to start as soon as I thought and therefore I'm unhappy? Like you traded for me only to put me on the bench behind Teddy Bridgewater. I don't like that. Could that backfire on Carolina? I don't think so. I think the problem with Sam Darnold is that he was thrown out there with a bad organization and he got shook. He was shook up front. His numbers are bad. And last year was really bad. I mean, I mean, he's, he, he completed 59% of his passes, 2,200 yards, nine touchdowns, 11 picks. See, and that's part of what I'm saying. Is it better for him psychologically 
to get back out there, get back in. It's like if you lose a game, the next thing you want to do is play the next game so I can screw up myself clean of that, not think about it. Because if he's on the bench behind Teddy Bridgewater, there's always going to be that voice in the back of his head questioning whether or not he is the Sam Darnold of USC or the Sam Darnold of the Jets. He did this for three years of being really bad and going back out there. That's my point. Now it's time for him to learn. I think he should take the uh, Jameis Winston approach. Mm-hmm. Going for quarterback, which Teddy Bridgewater is, is a really good quarterback. He's just not the strongest arm or the quote-unquote goatish that we look for or the, the, the prototype quarterback that we're looking for. Mm-hmm. I think he's good enough to teach Sam Darnold how to approach the game moving forward. But does he want to? At 23 years old, you better. I'm talking about uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Does he want to be there to do that? Does he want to be there just to be somewhat a mentor who's bringing the kid along, and then after that, they're going to get rid of him? Or does he want to leave now? Does he want to be more proactive? Because as we've talked about, the NFL is becoming more mobile, just like the NBA. Right. So why does he want to ra- wait around for another season? And Teddy Bridgewater's got to be 28, 29, approaching 30. Right. Why would he want to do that when he can be somewhere else that needs him more and will start him? He signed a three-year contract with the Panthers, uh-huh. so... What's the reason of giving up the money? Well, I mean, if he's traded, would he be giving up money? I know the the Panthers would. Well, no, if they're if they're trading Teddy Bridgewater, they're getting something back. They should you be got, getting you something got Sam back. Darnold, and you're getting some of the draft capital back that you gave in order to get Sam Darnold. So me, I don't see anything wrong with that. Let me put it like this: Where are they going to trade him though? Because Washington. they've had him, but they've had him this all this year, and they ain't traded him yet. Look, if. <laughs> Why haven't they traded him, Demi? Is my point. Why haven't like, they traded who Teddy Bridgewater? Yeah, they had him this year. He threw for thirty seven hundred yards. Because he was going to be their starting quarterback until they decided to get Sam Darnold. Now that they've got him, trade him to Washington. Well, I mean, the rumor was that they were trading for they were trying to get Watson. But a lot of people were, of course. But that was the that, that like they were like hardcore in on getting Watson. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then Teddy Bridgewater should have already been thinking. They're going to replace me sooner rather than later, anyway. So why should I stay here and help this organization when I can be somewhere else? I mean, do you want to check? But, he, but if he got traded, he would still get his money. Well, that's the thing. He, I mean, I get that. And, yeah. like, and, and their general manager has stated right here, based upon a quote, we're okay. going to find the right place right, find the right place for him, whether it's here or someplace else. Okay, which means we're going to trade you. That's basically what that means. Because here can't be the right spot for me if you just brought in 23-year-old Sam Darnold. Okay, so who's going to want Washington, Teddy Bridgewater? Washington, Washington, Washington. You can have Fitzmagic or you can have... Teddy Bridgewater. Well, they'll have both. Right. One of those two has to start. We'll say, who would you rather have? Ryan Fitzpatrick as your starting quarterback? Sell that to your Washington fan base. Or Teddy Bridgewater? Get him before the Bears do. That's what I say. He's not going to get traded to Chicago. They've got their starting quarterback. Right. Andy Dalton. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. (laughs) Everyone in that front office, every time they walk out, they're looking over their shoulder because the Chicago fan base is beyond pissed as to what they've done. So this can be a way to kind of help fix that and resell this season to your fan base. Oh, no, I get that. I get that. And it feels like, well, as we go into the Chicago Bears, <laughs> they should. They're not. Mm-hmm. They've got Dalton, so they're good. Yep. So if this is all it took, a six-rounder this year, a second and a fourth next year, no first-rounders whatsoever, why haven't either one of these two teams, Chicago or Washington, jumped on this with an even more aggressive offer for Sam Darnold? Some people don't believe that Darnold is worth it. Uh-huh. Obviously, like I'm saying, the, the Jet, like, so one thing I did read was that they had been engaged in this conversation for a while. Them and the Jets? Yeah, the okay. Jets and the Panthers. Right. And so the only team that they were really engaged with was the Panthers, based upon what I've read. Mm-hmm. That don't make any sense to me. I'm a little thrown off by that. I guess the Panthers were holding back with hopes of getting uh, Deshaun Watson. Yeah. But now that everything is just falling downhill in that situation, they're just mm-hmm. like, all right, screw it. We're going to go for the second option, which is Sam Darnold. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> uh, so whatever, but they were the only team that went after him. That wouldn't make sense because if Chicago or Washington is picking up the phone, and let's say before they even sign Andy Dalton, why would you not want to hear what they have to offer? Right. That's the team that I, I will, well, I mean, but yeah, so I would want to hear is, it. So then the Jets, because I think you asked initially, did they give him away? Yeah, they, they, they gave him away. They gave him away. They gave him away. They just hand, they say, here, you can take him. We just, we just want him gone. To a team that already has a starting quarterback. So it, imagine what it would have been to a team who doesn't have a starting quarterback. And they also are the first team in modern history to actually draft two quarterbacks with top three picks within a four-year span. Oh, yeah, right. That tells you all.